Welcome to Sampless Doctrine, the podcast of Sovereign Grace Music, where we explore what the Bible has to say about music and worship in the church and encourage those who plan, lead, and participate in their Sunday gatherings each week. Hello and welcome to the Soundless Doctrine Podcast. My name is David Zimmer. My name is Bob Coughlin, and we have a special treat today. Wow. If you're a regular listener of the Sound Plus Doctrine podcast. <laughs> Actually, every every podcast, every episode is a special treat. Yes. But today, this is specialer. Uh, back in the second season of Sound Plus Doctrine, uh, episode one, I think we did uh, something called Planning Sundays, mm-hmm. where we talked about, oddly enough, how we plan Sundays. <laughs> David, you had the great idea of showing people on the podcast how we actually do it by Zoom. We we meet by Zoom on Tuesdays at 1.30 and uh, yeah, plan the meeting. So thank you for thinking of that idea. You are so welcome. I wanted uh, people to, to, yeah, just get some insight on how we think through this. And and uh, there's four of us. It's Bob and uh, myself and Fabrizio, who's a member of Sovereign Grace Church of Louisville. And he also uh, works for Sovereign Grace Music. Does a great job. And Reuben Foster. Um, who is also a member of Sovereign Grace Church, um, and he has sang on our albums, written some songs. He sang on The Glorious Christ. uh, And it's just such a wonderful time for us to wrestle through how we're thinking through Sundays, picking the scriptures, picking the songs. And to do it with four guys is just really fun. It It is a joy. And after we do this, what you see, I'll send it to the pastors for their feedback. And I want to mention, if you're not watching on YouTube, you're going to miss some of the details because we actually share the screen. We all look at what's going on in the computer mm-hmm. at the same time, and we can do it from different places. So it's really, really been a wonderful uh, practice for us to do, and I've been enjoying it, and we thought you might enjoy it too. Yeah. Enjoy. Okay. So... This is a normal Zoom uh, planning meeting uh, that we have with Sovereign Grace Church Louisville, although it's not really normal because we have microphones, and I never use a microphone, and we've got <laughs> lighting and makeup. No, we didn't use makeup. Just kidding. Um, I, use, I use makeup. Okay. <laughs> Ruben, you're the only one who doesn't need makeup. We need makeup, especially. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, it's so fun doing this and uh, knowing that other people are going to be able to enjoy our time together, which we do every week. Like planning is fun. Would you guys agree? Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, feel, feel free to disagree. We typically, we've already prayed. Uh, that's where we start. And uh, we just ask the Lord to, to guide us. But we did that before we started recording. And what we'll often do is... Um, we re- re- review last week's last Sunday's meeting, and for the sake of time, I don't. Well, you know, let's just do that briefly. All right, right. I'm going to share the screen, and this is what I do with everybody. And there we go. And this document here is uh, a document that we keep track of every Sunday gathering. Uh, the, the liturgy for every Sunday gathering. This one goes back to 2020. And then I have another Google Doc that goes back to 2012 when we started the church. It's just helpful to have this for search functions. Like when we want to find out when I did a song or when we used a scripture, just do a quick word search. It's right there, it tells us. Um, mm-hmm. We also use Planning Center, which is right here. And uh, we have done a lot of preparation in advance. I've done some preparation in advance, again, to, to make this so that it doesn't go an hour, hour and 15 minutes. But before we get into that, to just talk about this past Sunday, which is right here. Uh, yeah, any thoughts? Fabrizio, I know you're out of town, but David, Ruben, any thoughts you had on how things went? We taught a new song for the cause. Um, Mighty Fortress is Our God. Jeff led responsive reading, which was great. Although responsive readings, they're hard. Um, mm-hmm. You know, our church isn't used to them. I would say we do them every three or four months, uh, maybe a little, maybe a little more often than that. But it yeah. is it's significant to do just because it it gives us an opportunity to declare together, just with words, uh, the word of God. Or we yeah. do uh, corporate confessions sometimes. Um, yeah, just different things. 
So we did that, responsive reading, and then come behold, all hail. Um, and then we ended up doing for the cause again. Yeah. Yeah, because we had thoughts? just we had just introduced it. I thought for the cause went well. I thought um yeah, it tied well with what Brian is saying. I mean, um it was all Acts twenty two, twenty three. And the two biggest themes that stood out to me were uh, take courage, you know, Paul's courage in speaking in front of these people, yes. uh, his courage to be bold. And then the resurrection gives us hope, the fact that uh, we we have a sure hope that uh, we anchor our beliefs. And Paul was just w- willing and ready to die, literally at any minute. Yes. <laughs> it's like the mob's attacking and he's pulled away. And yes. then they're you know, and then they're going to beat him and then he's pulled away. And so it just, but his boldness even still because of the hope of the resurrection. So those are the two themes that popped out to me. Yes. And I love that, uh, in for the cause. So we taught it before the sermon and then sang it again after the sermon. Ruben, you've been trying to get us to do this song for like, what, like three oh, months at now? At least, at least. Uh, <laughs> Cause we're in a series on acts <laughs> and it's just, it's, you know, you're looking for your mission songs, your evangelism songs, those kind of things. But I love that we did it this past week. Um, verse five, let it be my life's refrain mm-hmm. to live as Christ, to die as gain, deny myself, take up my cross and follow the son. Christ we proclaim. Yeah, so I, I thought that worked really well. Yeah. And rather than just teaching it new after the sermon, because if you're doing a song after the sermon, you want people to know it. You you want them mm-hmm. to respond in that sense. So. So, okay, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, Sunday. And then, you know, I wanted to mention too, I did a like a little kind of spontaneous musical prayer in between. I don't know if you guys remember that. In between, mm-hmm. come behold and all hail the, mis- all the hail the glorious Christ. And something to the effect of, Lord, one day we're going to see you and we're just going to say, you are worthy. You, you, you are worth it. You are worth it. And mm. it was, I did that partly because we the songs we had sung were all pretty, you know, gung-ho, a mighty fortress is our God for the cause. You know, and lots come of with, lyrics. Lots of lyrics. And we're belting it out. Um, and you know, as we will be when he comes. And, and just before we sang All Hail the Glorious Christ, which is another, you know, triumphant song about mm-hmm. how the Lord reigns over everything, our enemies, our temptations, and, you know, when he comes, he will reign over everything, um, just to give us a little time to reflect. So I, I think that's something we need to be aware of as leaders. Just It's not just about pour out, pour out, pour out, you know, shout, shout, shout. There, there can be moments of more reflection and just time to take it in. It, take it in. I think that mm-hmm. that may be what a selah means. We're not quite sure, but in the Psalms, when it says selah, hey, think about this for a moment. Uh, yeah. So that that seemed to be helpful, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, the two thoughts I had from the sermon really were the last. The last two lines in your notes here, Bob, and thanks for sending those. Oh, oh yeah, okay. You know what? Let's move into this. Yeah, um, you know, because I thought this question really, it really just kind of tied everything together. Is it not worth it to be led into the troubles and difficulties so that the gospel might be advanced? Yes. Um, And then that second question, that we might testify to the deliverance that is found in our crucified and, and risen I think yes. they just say Lord. Amen. Yeah, crucified and risen Lord. So mm-hmm. yeah, that word kept coming up, deliverance. And it's just been it's just been on my mind all week. Yes. Um, Amen. The idea of, of, Amen. Of and what that means for believers. So that might be something worth exploring. Amen. Yeah. Guys, I just want you to know if you send me stuff in chat, I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking just bad what, about you already. What appeared Bob. on the screen? Just tell me. We can't be subtle about this. Whatever people hear, is, we're going to hear. All right. So, yeah, we begin planning the Sunday, uh, looking at the notes from last week. We're going to begin with a call to worship. Uh, actually, one, one, one other thing. Sorry. I've already picked people for Sunday, and I'm going to send that right now. 
for music before you, you before you pick the songs uh before i pick the songs yeah um which i think is the, different than some how some worship leaders think about it of like why well, i would never do that song if so and so was on the drums oh uh, okay or so and so yeah. was singing or whatever but we you're saying i want to frame our services with <laughs> what would go Oh, cool. What songs would fit best before you pick yes. even the musicians to sing them? And I want to know why Planning Center is going like a wall as we're trying to <laughs> as we're trying to do this. There you go. All right. Sometimes humble. it has a little. I I do accept my request to play piano. Okay. So we get the band. Yeah, we get the, them together, um, and then we look at the notes from the previous week because that's where we're going to begin our call to worship. I know a lot of people, I think we've talked about this on the podcast, a lot of people start the uh, meeting looking forward to the message that's going to be preached. We start with the week before. Mm -hmm. uh, people have heard it. It connects the Sundays together. It shows that that word preached last week is valuable. And Ruben, you were just saying deliverance really came through mm -hmm. uh, as, as we were thinking about this, that and the Lord is going to deliver us and he is worthy to endure trials. So actually, um, to save time, I, actually, I came up with some potential calls to worship, potential songs, so we can, this would be a little quicker than we'd work through it, um, but it'll give you an idea, give people an idea of what we do. Yeah. So with that in mind, here are some scriptures that came to mind. Mm -hmm. And I use, uh, Lagos Bible program, Bible study program, software, and I might do a search on the word deliverance, and that'll take me to a number of scriptures. So that that's just been incredibly helpful. If I can't mm -hmm. think of any, yes. So blessed be the blessed be the Lord who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. Our God is a God of salvation, and to God the Lord belong deliverances from death. Mm. Uh, mm. That, but here's here's where doing uh, Google search or using the Google Doc is helpful. I do a search on that, and I found out that we just used that same <laughs> call of worship March twelfth. So that's that's three and the months. reason and the reason you wouldn't want to like continue doing the same passage as a call to worship. What's that reason? Yeah, we want to. You know, our liturgies teach, they model, they form, they instruct. And so we want to use different parts of scripture um, in, in one week and then different parts from week to week, different scriptures. So we're just not going to the same scriptures. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that basing the call to worship on the previous message does, it helps us, it forces us to find scriptures for calls to worship that are a little bit maybe out of the box. Mm. other than sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord, praise his name, right. you know, where we tend to go, just general general calls to worship. No, let's praise him for who he is, for what he does. Yeah. Like said. That's um, good. Yeah. So that's once. So let's take that one out since we just did it. Uh, you are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. So I love that from Psalm 32. That's the that's the first one I actually have on here as just I've got my own. Um, oh, excellent! Oh, thanks, Ruben. Yeah, that's that's a great. It, my I guess my question that I had though, because that was maybe going to be the first suggestion that I made for the call to worship. Um, my first thought was, "Is it too short?" And I was just wondering what your thoughts were on that. That's on a great question. Call. I I don't think you can have a call to worship that's too short if you if you address what it actually says hmm. so in fact I, I would even argue for um not having real long calls to worship because what can happen is that people have come in from their lives daily lives they're distracted they've you know been getting their kids ready or, or just get, getting their lives ready <laughs> to come into the meeting and they're they're having a hard time focusing so we read like a, a whole psalm yeah, unless we've set them up for that, unless we we said something like, notice how the Lord speaks of his deliverance in this psalm, or mm. notice how many times, you know, God refers to his salvation, Some, something that, you know, gives them a focus. 
it's real easy to get distracted and I think lose the the benefit of reading that scripture. Yes. Yeah. So Absolutely. I don't, it says three things there. You are a hiding place. You preserve me. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. So I, I think that'd be great. Yeah. I, I really uh, like the following uh, one you have listed. And I think the reason I really like it is because it, it denotes the context you're in. It speaks of we're doing this together. And so as a call to worship, I really appreciate passages that kind of remind us that we're not doing this. It's not a me and Jesus thing, even though a passage like the previous one is helpful. I like that not only is it saying God has delivered me, but I'm going to tell others. This is a, yes. something we are singing to one another, sharing with one another. Uh, so have told the glad news of deliverance. Why, yeah, why don't you read it for people who, who aren't watching this on YouTube? Yeah, so Psalm 40, verses 9 and 10. I've told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips. As you know, O Lord, I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. I love that. I love that too. And I mean... I agree with Fabrizio. I think they're both really great passages. There's something I do love about that. Psalm 49, uh, just the idea that neither did Paul. I mean, he he was bold and pro proclaiming that he didn't hold back anything when he was preaching or when he was teaching. So I really like that it's in the, in the midst of the, obviously different congregation, but in the midst of everybody, I'm going to sing and praise you. Right. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to dump this other one with a free will offering. I will sacrifice to you that could could throw people off right there with a free will offering. You have to explain that. I would think so. Yeah. Let's just take that out. Take them to but, class. What's that? Take them to class. Yeah. <laughs> you could. <laughs> I think that's the uh, only one, yeah. How about this one? Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. I mean, I love that because I feel like it, it gives the setting that Paul was in. Um, he was walking in the midst of troubles. Yes, he was. You see in the text, and I don't, I don't disagree with um, with you guys either on on Psalm forty. Um, it seems, yeah, I think I might just be tempted towards um, shorter texts. It seems like there's a lot in um, Psalm forty nine through ten, um, but I could be wrong on that. Well, I think there is, but I think it's the same. It's like the same movement. Yep. Uh, I've told the glad news. I've not restrained my lips. I've not hidden your deliverance. Right. I have spoken. I have not concealed. Yeah. You, you know, it's it's just that over overwhelming. I can't keep this in. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I also I also think it it helps. Since it's a call to worship, we're encouraging one another to sing these things because we've all been delivered from all kinds of situations. I mean, yes. that's kind of part of the application Brian was making is we're all going through difficulties. We all go through different things that we are delivered from, not just enemies, although that is a big part of you know the focus of the text. And so the setting of, of Psalm 40 is like, we're ready to sing. We are mm -hmm. ready to proclaim we are ready to not hold back to sing about his love and steadfast, uh, sorry, steadfast love and faithfulness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why don't we start there? Since, uh, I mean, I, I love the short ones, but I think there is this this sense of, um, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, let's claim that God's a deliverer. Yeah. All right. And normally, just so people are watching this know or listening, we would start from scratch. Like we just we just say, guys, let's come up with scriptures, and um, yeah, there's a real beauty to that. Uh, okay, so I I have like eight nine songs here <laughs> because I didn't know where we were going, and and what we're seeking to do in in building a liturgy, an order, a progression, is go from one thing to the next. So, it, you know, a pastor is going to come out and welcome the guests and uh, or come up and welcome the guests and then deliver this call to worship with a little bit of an explanation. And then we're going to sing our first song. So what song is going to, is going to be a, it, 
what what song are you going to want to sing after that call to worship? The first one that jumps at me is our song from H to H from that okay list. why and i'm going to pull it up on the screen again if you're if you're not watching this on youtube you're missing out on these special features <laughs> okay go subscribe to our youtube channel yeah so what i did <laughs> marketing <laughs> I just, what i just did what's that ribbon nothing i'm just being ridiculous Keep okay going. hey there's there's a place for being ridiculous what i just did was i have all our songs in, in on my computer uh, and my and my finder, I just go to the song, you know, hit the space bar, and it, it pops up, so we can see the lyrics. So we can read because we're always talking about the lyrics. What, okay, for Bezer, what are you gonna say? Yeah, I think I I love that the beginning of the song is setting the stage for creation. So it's bringing us back to the person of God, the character of God, and the works of God um, from eternity past, or or, or the beginning of the creation rather. Uh, and so then he he walks through what it looked like, you know, for him to create everything, but also how he loved us and, and how he gave us his grace. And he did that in verse two, God taking on flesh in Jesus. And so we we sing of that as we as we respond to his character. I really love uh, the third verse in this. As I kind of reflect on Brian's message last week and think of, the trials we face and how God is sovereign and we're trusting in his sovereignty. Yes, yes. Your way is best, though tears now veil our eyes. I mean, there's mm. so much we don't know. Why is God doing this? Yeah. And that line just jumps out to me. So I do like that it starts with the, the, the macro level of God uh, who made all these things and it comes into the micro of what he's done. Yes. I think it's a great call to worship. Yes, and I wrote on here when we last did it. We last did it uh, April 30th, April, May, June, July. So that's about two and a half months. We try to allow three months between songs, just generally, generally. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll change that. Um, like with a new song, we might do it the next week. Um, or if it's song after a message, we might do that closer together. But that's not so bad. Um Ruben, you have any thoughts? No, not. I mean, I'm just thinking through that. I'm thinking through that song. Uh, and I was wondering, I had a different song that isn't on your sheet here. Uh, I, feel I free to suggest that, songs that aren't on here. Uh, I don't think it's really going to work here, but um, I was looking at Rejoice, that uh, Kendra song. Yep. Come and stand before your maker, full of wonderful fear. Come behold his power and glory with confidence draw near. For the one who holds the heavens and commands stars above is the God who tends to bless us with an unrelenting love. Rejoice, come and lift your hands and raise your voice. He is worthy of all praise. Rejoice, sing the mercies of your king. We are children of the promise, the beloved of the Lord, one with everlasting kindness, bought with sacrificial blood, bringing reconciliation to a world that longs to know the affections of a father, all our sickness, all our sorrows. Jesus carried up the hill, turning tragedy to triumph, turn agony to praise. Whew, there's some good stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me just look at this for a second. Uh, rejoice, we did that. Oops, well, I have to spell it right to really look it up. Hold it. It's coming in. Yeah, that's what I thought. Rejoice, rejoice. Uh, we did that March 19th. So that would be just... There were lines in it that I liked, but I think over and yeah. above all. <clears throat> I think over and above all, what um, from age to age might, might fit better. Uh, our song from age to age. Well, and Ruben, I think two weeks ago when Steve preached, when he talks about gospel plans that don't go as planned are God's means to advance the gospel. Mm -hmm. That turning tragedy to triumph, turning agony to praise, I see that a real, yeah. a real strong connecting point to that sermon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and, and uh, suffering, uh, this gets into suffering. When you cry to him, he hears your voice. He will wipe away your tears. I think that takes it in a little bit of a different direction where uh, our song from age to age stays on that track of yeah. um, he, he's got us and he's going to, what, what was the phrase? Uh, uh, our song, the phrase was, yeah, through tempests and through trials. And I like this, our shepherd king, your way is best, though tears now veil our eyes. That idea of 
when our ways don't work out, God's ways do. Yes. Jeez. And even in, even there's a line. I mean, he, he speaks in verse 3, third line, your steadfast love, our perfect hope, our eyes are fixed on grace. And that immediately connects to, I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Yes. There's yeah, a, that's great. There's a one-to-one relationship there. Mm-hmm. And, and I would say the whole thing of... Um, I will, which which rejoice has as well, but th- I love the uh, the chorus. I've not restrained my lips. I've not hidden. I've spoken of your faithfulness. I have not concealed. You know, we will uh, proclaim your power to save again and again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's a direct tie-in. Okay, that that seems to be the song. All right, what would you do after that? Where does it end? Oh, uh, good point. Always a good question. We will proclaim your power to save again and again. Mm. So that next song, Mm -hmm. we probably want to proclaim his power to save. The gospel. There is one gospel? Well, the gospel is power uh, to save. Yeah. So a a song that highlights the gospel. Yes. I do. Go ahead. Uh, no, you go ahead. Finish your thought. I was going to say we have some we have some spate real estate here, so we're going to have a scripture reading, a couple more songs, so we can uh, uh, think about how we might we might have another song where we could do that. That's and right. actually, not bad having two songs. That's right. What were you going to say? I was here? I was wondering about um, you know, so in in our song from age to age, we're trusting in His sovereignty. Uh, as we walk this path, and it it made me think of Christ is mine forevermore. That's the song I was thinking of. Uh, mine are days that God has numbered. I was made to walk with Him, yet I look. So it has this sort of confessional yes. uh, element to it right off the bat. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, and w- that second song is often for us a song of confession. Not always. Yeah. But some element. Um, but I love this. The reason I thought of this was minor days here as a stranger, pilgrim on a narrow way, which kind mm. of hints back at the song before. One with Christ, I will encounter harm and hatred for his name. I mean, exactly what we're talking about. But mine is armor for this battle, strong enough to last the war. And he has said he will deliver safely to the golden shore. Mm. Yeah. Uh, can rejoice now, my soul, for his love is my reward. That that seems to make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ruben, Fabrizio, what do you guys think? I love that connection. Yeah, I think that's very clear. Yeah, it, yeah. I was going to get ahead, but I think for now this is great. Yeah, I think it's great that this song is kind of putting some biblical names to, you know, how we should see ourselves, you know. Pilgrim on the narrow way. Yes. Mm. Stranger. So, you know, being a stranger and sojourner, that just, that hints back to, um, that hints back to, I mean, how, how scripture calls us to look at ourselves on, on this side of eternity. So. Yes. um, Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, well said. And that, that, that third verse, uh, and and he said he will deliver. I love that. Yep. Even tied to that call to worship still. Safely to the golden shore. Okay, I'm going to bring these songs down. So now we will typically have a scripture reading. And again, not knowing what songs we're going to pick, (laughs) I was shooting in the dark, hopefully being led by the Spirit. But uh, two that came to mind... Can we, so, can we have this every every week, Pop? Uh, you know what? I'm thinking this is what we should do. <laughs> we should, like, it would really serve. Uh, and I don't mind coming up with some thoughts beforehand and then just saying. Anyway, um, the scripture, yeah, so one could be Colossians 1, 9 through 14. So from the day we heard, well, let's say, let me say where this ends. Mine is armor for the battle, strong enough to last the war. And he has said he will deliver safely to the golden shore. No, the end would be, Mine are keys to Zion City, where beside the king I walk. For there my heart has found its treasure. Christ is mine forevermore. That's already leading me to this Second Corinthians passage. For mm-hmm. what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. 
For God, yes. who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this passing power belongs to God and not to us. <laughs> this is, mm -hmm. thank you, Lord, for these words. <laughs> we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but driven to not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. Mm -hmm. That gets a lot of work done. Yep. That's good. That's yeah, that's good. great. I would go with that. I like also that it it ties a little bit to the first song. I'll, I'll sing of your power to save again and again and just yes. focusing that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just I mean, Paul's heart in writing those, those words to the Corinthians. Um, look, it's not about us. This, and, and, and we got that... Uh, in a previous sermon, one of CJ's sermons where he's talking about why it was so important for him to get to Jerusalem. Mm. He he wanted to communicate that the Gentiles had contributed contributed this offering to the Jews to show that we were one in Christ. It was a gospel reason mm. that he wanted to get to Jerusalem. And even though he knew he was going to encounter harm and hatred for preaching the gospel, he his heart was to to show the Jews in Jerusalem, no, the Gentiles are for you. We are together. Yeah. So uh, that's just his heart. We don't proclaim ourselves. Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. So, so I think here, uh, you know, a song that that either unpacks the gospel or, you know, talks about uh, you were carrying out in the body the death of Jesus, so the life of Jesus may also be manifest in our bodies. This would be a great time to do Come Behold the Wonders Mystery, but we just did it last week. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. These songs may not be the ones you'd want to do, but um, if you have another song in mind, that'd be hmm. fine. Um, Ruben, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, I was just... I was just looking at that last line, the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. And you know, I was just wondering if there's if there's a song that really, um, really just drives home that point. That you know, outwardly, we, it, it might look like it might look like God's not doing anything, but, mm. but that He is. Mm. And, yeah, you know, um, like like I mean, I'm I'm looking here at you know even Brian's last idea that we might testify to the deliverance that is found in our crucified and, and risen mm -hmm. Lord. Yes. Yes, um, yes. What, what is that, you know, what does that deliverance look like? And so I like, I like Christ, our glory. Um, you know, I'm not entirely sure if it, if it really drives home the latter part of, of that text, but well, yeah. Yeah. Well, and all, Bob just pulled up the Lord is my salvation. And yeah. as you're talking, I'm seeing a lot of these lines stick out. When winter fades, I know spring will come. You're mm -hmm. you're working mm -hmm. in the midst of my trials, in the midst of my circumstances. It, it, it's like the these phrases are starting to come out yeah. uh, of this song. And I, I do love that um you know, I'm safe on this solid ground. There's a lot of of scary things in this passage of 2 Corinthians 4, 5 through 10. Yes. We're afflicted, persecuted, driven to despair, struck down. But like, no, the Lord is my salvation. He will carry me. I know, I know he will take me to the end. Yes. The, I wonder if this is a fourth song rather than the third song. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I, I want to... This third song, uh, let's see, to give us the light, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, um, caring about, caring in the body, the death of Jesus, so the life of Jesus may be also manifest in our bodies. I wonder if this is a place where we just take some time to dwell on the death of Jesus and then respond mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. In my Redeemer's love. Yeah, could be. It's deeper than the depths of sin and hell. 
He who was enthroned in glory came to bring us to himself. My Redeemer's love is wider than the breach my sins had made. He reached down into my darkness. He alone has power to save. My Redeemer's love is stronger than my fiercest enemies. He will hold me in the tempest. The flood he carries me. Redeemer's love will lead me through the deepest valley here. He will shepherd me and guide me. He'll ever keep me near. Deeper than the rolling seas. My Redeemer's love, and then it grows sweeter as eternity to draw us near. I'll enjoy his love forever. At his throne for endless, endless years. I think this is a great song, and I almost feel the same way that you felt about The Lord is My Salvation, about this song. Like, if we have a song where we can meditate on the death of Christ and then respond with this, yeah. after that, that would be really sweet, because it ties in all these themes that we've been talking about really well. Yes, and what I would typically doing is filling in all this stuff on the... Uh, over here on the YouTube, I'm uh, sorry, the YouTube, on the uh, planning center side, just put, uh, that's not there. Keep, keep talking. Any ideas for a song that would help us meditate on the sufferings of Christ? Uh, last week, I think we, someone suggested, um, maybe it was you, Ruben, um, Oh, the king and all his beauty. King and all his beauty. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the one, but um, I feel like that might that might be a good last song too. Because <laughs> okay. uh, <laughs> I feel like great at coming up with fourth song. <laughs> right. Can we well, try? <laughs> do you? I'm wondering still about the Lord is my salvation. It feels like it ties very well with this Second Corinthians passage, the first half of the passage. But you guys are looking at the last half of the passage. Yeah, yeah, right. So, well, um, trying to go with um, the idea uh, of just it's the gospel that gives us the courage, the fortitude, the hope the strength to endure, everything goes back to, and this is what we're doing every Sunday, um, it, it's rooting people in the gospel. Mm -hmm. and, in, and I feel like we haven't had a song that, um, that, that really gives us time to just dwell in that yeah. you know, for, mm. for good. I mean, yeah, that's my sense. Could be wrong. Um, but uh, mm. Actually, one of the songs I thought of was Man of Sorrows, but I don't know. Because, David, I think you had thought about that for this week, but I don't know. By his own betrayed, sin of man, wrath of God has been on Jesus laid. Silent as he stood accused. So so this, so this, we're looking to Christ and what he has done, yes. what, what he endured. Um, and But it's a clear gospel. Yeah, uh, you know the sin of man and wrath of God has been on Jesus late. Yeah, um, sent of heaven God's own Son to purchase and redeem and reconcile the very ones who nailed Him to that tree. Mm. My debt's paid; it's paid in full. So, and the stone is rolled away. Praise God! And then maybe to go from there into my Redeemer's love or the Lord's I like that. What about I like that? Not to belabor this any longer, but I I thought of uh, doing um, how deep the Father's love. There is a line in uh, verse two. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. And so there's that connection with uh, always carrying in the body of the death of Christ, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. So there's this aspect of through his death, we are, we receive life. Uh, and mm. it's a very penal substitutionary atonement focused song that really dwells on the, on the crucifixion. I think Fabrizio, and this is, I'm looking at the Google doc. I'm just doing a search for how deep the father's love. We just, well, actually, yeah, we just had that April 2nd. Yeah. Mm. Well, that was three months ago. We're, in, we're yeah. So this podcast is going to show after a, a few weeks after we record it. So we're looking into July. So that's not so bad. How deep? I it's think not, that. Go ahead, Ruben. No, no, no. Make you make you thought about this. I think Manasaro says that better. What you just described. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a question. So, um, have we ever done "Hallelujah"? What a savior. 
Uh, yes. <laughs> um, I don't know how you feel about that song. I just oh, I love the song. Oh man, is that kind of parallel? That idea of you know what Christ's death, what that what that looked like versus what it accomplished. Yes, yes. Um, which I feel like is you know what we're looking at in in the last part of that. Um, of that text. Yes. Yeah. 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 Death of Jesus, but the life of Jesus. Yes. You know, um, Devin put a new tune to this. Can you hear this? Man yeah. of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah. I mean, we've sung that. But then there's also the regular hymn. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God. I don't think we've ever done that version. It's a beautiful version. Mm. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I feel like I lean more towards doing uh, Men of Sorrows. I think that the direction I think so. feels clearer. And I like the resurrection, just that, that whole verse, uh, giving the resurrection space on that. But I love the original hymn. It's beautiful. You should probably teach that at some point. I lean towards Man of Sorrows. Uh, do you guys like this version? I don't know if I've ever I, heard I grew that. up singing it in Spanish, so I, okay. it has a place in my heart. <laughs> Ruben, did you ever sing it? Before you, you came, me I, I did not grow up singing it in Spanish, um, <laughs> or at all. Actually, what a surprise. Okay, you, you guys didn't do it. I yeah, think we've we never... done this maybe once or twice at church. Now yeah, that yeah. I think I've heard it. We never recorded it on a on a main album. Song based music that we did. All right, I'm leaning towards Man of Sorrows. Now Let's throw so. it in there. Yeah. Um, and then, which uh, we haven't done for quite some time, I don't think. Man of Sorrows, we're going to find out right now. It, we did it, yeah, a year ago, over a year ago. All right, it's about time. And then, what would you follow that with? One of the four suggestions we made for four <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would go with my Redeemer's, with my, my Redeemer's love is deeper. My Redeemer's love, sir. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Uh, they're kind of the same tempo, which is that could be fine. You guys okay with that? I feel like they're the same tempo, but very different feel. Yeah, my Redeemer's love is driving. Mm -hmm. I feel like Man of Sorrows is more like mid tempo yeah. pop. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Redeemer's love. I think that'd be great. Mm -hmm. We haven't done that since 20, 19, tw uh, 2020. Sorry. 1920. <laughs> All right, guys, we're that, Those are two. Oh, Man of Stars isn't too wordy, I don't think. No. Um, yeah. What was the other one? The Lord's My Salvation. Who mm is -hmm. like the Lord of God. I lean a little bit towards that. Uh, only because I think it's a little simpler. Mm. Um, the other one's... Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. The grace of God has reached for me and pulled me from the region. Yeah, yes. Solid ground. Lord is my salvation. I will not fear when darkness falls. Just hang strength of me. It's like the Lord our God, strong to save, faithful in love. I feel it brings it back to that salvation. In times of waiting, times of need. His grace is going to renew these days. I mean, so does the other when I reach my final day. Yeah, the chorus of the chorus of the Lord is my salvation, uh, I think really answers, you know, the thoughts you have in Man of Sorrows. My debt is paid in the victory won. Did that, yeah, back in March, so three and a half months ago. So it'd be okay to do it again. Well, yeah. What do you sense? What do you guys sense? I think that's a good. I think that's a good move. The Lord is my salvation. 
it feels just a little bit want to be sense i think we're, we're just trying to be sensitive to uh people's capacities you know yeah brian chapel talks about that in crescent worship what can people actually take in and i think especially when you're more intentional about lyrics we have to be sensitive to uh maybe everybody's hasn't been a christian for 40 years yeah and they're not knowing how to process this oh i deleted all the songs okay so i think i don't know we're gonna pick a song for after the message um which let's just give a couple minutes to see if we can do that great this it's acts 21 and we'll look at it together Acts. i'm sorry acts 23 verses 12 through 35 and it's it's basically the plot to kill paul which doesn't succeed his nephew tells the uh what is it the tribune that hey these people are going to kill paul and they don't and then he's sent to felix the governor and uh yeah felix says yeah he's he writes a letter about paul and says hey this mm -hmm. guy i rescued him and um so i'm sending him on to you so so i wasn't sure in the series on acts it's been pretty difficult to have the right song to end yeah. i'd say we're at a 50 50 success rate yeah um and and what very we generous, Bob. that's very generous yeah. and what we do is i'll text uh amanda she's she does admin for the church i Church of louisville and uh she'll out of the blue appear with charts at the end and I'll text everybody else saying, hey, we're doing this song instead. Um, but yeah, it's it's another example of Paul being delivered, but waiting for deliverance in some senses. Um, on reading mm -hmm. the letter, he asks, yeah, he said, I'll give you a hearing when your accusers arrive. And he commanded him to be guarded in Herod's Praetorium. So again, another example of deliverance. So many examples of God rescuing Paul and others out of the dangers that they were in. So I don't know if any songs come to mind. I mean, my Redeemer's love would fit there. Yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> I was also I was all, I it, depending on where CJ will land. I was also thinking potentially Psalm one twenty one, as people go. That you know he will keep them. Mm -hmm. He will um, keep as they at whatever they face. Mm. You know, he's ordained these things. He's sovereign over all these things. Yes. Um, Have we taught that? We haven't. So I wouldn't do oh, it there. Oh, I thought we did. I, I'm sorry. Well, I thought we did. No, but I would like to teach that. That's from Yes, I wouldn't put it at the end. Yeah, if we didn't teach it. Yeah. Uh, so would you guys be okay with... Uh, yeah, we haven't done it. Um, my Redeemer's Love, unless you have another thought? I would say so. Yeah. And it, yeah, I mean, and we'll gauge it, you know, as the sermon progresses. Yes. Stronger than my fiercest enemies. He will hold me in the tempest through the flood. He'll lead me deepest valley here, shepherd me and guide me. Uh, yeah, grow sweeter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then for a benediction, again, I'm just trying to guess. I, now I commend you. So I'm thinking of the sermon. Mm -hmm. What's the sermon been that Paul has been rescued from the uh, the the Jews from the Romans? Um, he's Gentiles. He's be, he's been rescued all these ways. So now I commend you, and we can trust God to deliver us as well. I commend you to God and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. That's Paul's words to the Ephesian, hmm. Ephesian elders. Or, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. I think the thought there was just, we, we end with Paul waiting yeah. mm -hmm. again. Um, and what we typically do is I have this list of benedictions on another Google Doc that we don't always we don't go with these all the time but it can yeah. serve as a starting place right the scriptures that can are good to send people out with mm -hmm. um 
this is another one I didn't look at. After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to eternal glory in Christ mm -hmm. will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. I love that passage. Yeah, that's good. All right. I love that uh, in light of, uh, I know you're not looking at last week anymore because of what CJ is going to preach, but the idea that the Lord stood by him when he went into the jail cell. Yes. I loved that passage. Yes. Oh, and the third one, may the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Depending on where CJ ends, he might land there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, let me just see if we've used either one of these recently after you have suffered. I don't think we've used that one. Uh, that would be... Actually, just use that. The after you have suffered oh, a little yeah. while. Mm. So I, I right. tend to lean towards the Jude one, but... Oh, okay. Why? I I, I don't know where it is anymore, so I... I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you don't have it memorized? What's the problem? <laughs> Jude 2021. 20, but you, beloved. Yeah, there's just there's just that we were just singing about the Redeemer's love and that that connection of mm. yeah, we are beloved. You know, that is our Keep identity. I like that. That's good. That's good. Ruben? I agree. All right. Brothers, it has been an absolute joy uh, doing this together. And uh, if you've been joining us for the podcast, thank you. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed this. I know it's been a little longer than normal, but we just thought we'd bring you into to what we do and pray that it has served you somehow. Thank you for the ways you're faithfully serving in your churches for the glory of Jesus. See you next time. Thank you for listening to Sound Plus Doctrine, the podcast of Sovereign Grace Music. Sovereign Grace Music exists to produce Christ-exalting songs and training for the church from our local churches. For more information, free sheet music, translations, and training resources, you can visit us at SovereignGraceMusic.org.